friends, welcome to the video. If you've never seen my face before, I'm Olivia, and you can consider me your fragrance fairy godmother. So if you guys didn't join me in last week's video, I had a big haul of new fragrances coming into my collection. I had to break it into two parts, so today is part two. So if you didn't check out last week's video, go check that out and join me here. We've got a lot of fragrances to get through, my friends, so grab yourself a drink, put on your seatbelt, and let's get rolling. Starting off with Blue Matcha. So as one would assume from the name of this fragrance, this is a matcha fragrance, but this is going to be different than a lot of tea fragrances that I have in my collection. A lot of them are sweet and creamy and latte-like. This is going to be for somebody who likes something that is earthy and lacks sweetness. The earthiness is not only coming from some matcha, but mate, tobacco, and patchouli. And the patchouli comes off a little bit spiced, but also slightly dewy and green, like springtime. The dry down, it leans just a little bit on emolic from some leather and has a noticeable powderiness. Something about this is reminiscent of Persephone's Patchouli by Electimus. So if you like that fragrance, but it's a little bit aquatic for your taste. This is more of a powdery version. Because of the dewiness and the earthiness, I could see this really shining in springtime, so I'm going to revisit that a little bit later in the year. Next is Leonora. I'm going to be reaching for this one in spring and summer because this is a fruity floral, but this is not a designer-like fruity floral. Rather, has a lot of nuance and smells very sophisticated. There is a super juicy passion fruit along with an apricot skin, and you can almost smell the slight fuzz that you would get on the outside of an apricot. And the florals in this are a freesia, which is very uplifting, and an osmanthus that comes off honeyed and a little bit animalic. And then in the base, you get a really creamy sandalwood and musk. This is a sweet and tangy honeyed florals with a creamy musky base. I think a lot of people would love this. If you are graduating from designer fragrances and you're looking to go into the niche realm. This is quite expensive, but I think that this would be an easy transitional fragrance. So this next fragrance was created specifically for the Scent Expo that I went to last month in New York City called Scent Explore. It's called Scent X Me by Kieran. This is a peculiar fragrance because in the beginning you are getting a passion fruit and a champagne. So you're getting something that's sparkling and juicy and tangy and citrusy. But then as this dries down, you start to get some warming characteristics characteristics from some cinnamon and rum. So this would be good for someone who want to split the difference between something refreshing and something warming. And I think for that purpose, this would be good all year long. Also, Mikalef has been super generous to send me a ton of fragrances lately. And I don't know if this is a glitch or they meant to do this, but uh, we have a lot to talk about here. So I'm very thankful. Uh, let's get into it. Let's start with Royal Muska. This is such a beautiful feminine fragrance. This smells like an ultra clean, ultra refined woman. This does not smell very young. So I think to some noses is going to smell a little bit mature, but to me, it reads very sophisticated. And at 30, I would feel comfortable wearing this. There's a little bit of sweetness coming from some peach and raspberry. But it is not candied or synthetic smelling and quickly is taken over by some natural smelling rose, a little bit of a creamy lang, but overall this is a clean white musk dominant fragrance. If you like to smell like a fresh bubble bath and very powdery and soft and feminine, you would love this. Next is Ylang and Gold Nectar. So as you imagine from the name, this is an Ylang Ylang fragrance. And if you've never smelled that floral before, it is floral, but it is very sweet and creamy and can come off a little bit like banana custard. I talked about one last week that also has that banana custard sort of feel to it. And that creaminess is amplified with some coconut and vanilla. So this smells very tropical, but not in the sheer watery beachy sunscreen sense, rather a rich creamy vanillic sweet floral. This is so 
smooth. And I am having a love affair with Ylang lately. It is just such a delicate, perfect floral in my opinion. If you liked Utopia Vanilla Cocoa, but that one was a little bit too white floral dominant, I think you would like this because the florals are a little bit more subtle, but it still has that beachy, creamy quality to it. Next is Delice. If you guys are a fan of Side Effect by Inicio, I think that you would love this one. This is a warm and spicy, sweet, woody fragrance that's definitely going to read very winter time. The plum in this is sweet enough that it almost comes off a little bit like cherry, but not medicinal because you know we don't do medicinal in this house. It's got this beautiful warming nutmeg and cinnamon with a subtle amount of rose, so if you're not a fan of rose, it's definitely not dominant. And then it all sits on top of the bed of oud, but the oud in this is beautiful and charred. It has a patina to it, but it does not smell fecal. So this is woody, spicy, with a strong dose of sweetness. It is delicious. The name suits it perfectly. And the next three are from their masculine line, which I have really been liking. So even if you're not into masculine fragrances, listen to these. First up is Gin and Tonic. I cannot wait to wear this in hot weather. This is a super duper refreshing, very photorealistic gin and tonic fragrance. This is super, super aromatic in the beginning because you have some ginger, mint, and lime, as well as a black pepper to give it a little bit of spiciness. There is a light sheer floral component with some Lily of the Valley, but sometimes Lily of the Valley can come off a little bit metallic and bothersome to me. In this, it's very delicate, which I appreciate so much. And then as this dries down, you start to get a little bit more of a woodiness and a mossiness. So overall, this starts off super duper refreshing and bright, almost menthol. And then as it dries down, you get some soft woodiness. This will be incredible in the summertime. Next is Desir Toxic. This is sexy. The way that I would absolutely go feral on a man if I smelled this, this is sexy. You have a little bit of greenness coming from some cannabis, but you have some sweetness coming from a little bit of black currant, but then you have this warm spiciness coming from cardamom, cinnamon, tonka bean. This is a little bit green and a little bit dank. You get that slightly in the background, but then you're enveloped in this sweet warmth. If you are a woman and you traditionally only wear fragrances that are marketed towards women, venture into the realm of masculine fragrances because this is sweet and warm and comforting, yet a little bit dirty and alluring. It is incredible and I feel so confident when I wear this fragrance. And the most masculine leaning out of the group is Red Colorado. This is going to smell like a charred forest. It's super dry and woody to the point of it almost smelling a little bit ashy along with some really green pine. There is a soft and supple leather in the background and that little bit of vanilla is going to mix with some of those green notes creating almost an ambery resinous sticky quality Quality, like the sap you would get on the trees. This is super woody, very minimal sweetness with a little bit of greenery. So you have to like something that leans more on the traditionally masculine side. Next, I have two more from the house of room 1015. Let's start with purple mantra. So this is a beautiful incense forward fragrance. You're gonna get a lot of aromatics coming from some lavender and sage that feel very calming, but that pink pepper is pretty spicy in the beginning. I'm not a big fan of pink pepper, so rest assured it does calm down into a resinous, smoky, aromatic sort of experience. Imagine a misty haze around you. It is very whimsical and very dreamlike, very relaxing. I don't care for lavender and fragrances all too often, but I do enjoy when they're mixed with an incense because it makes sense to my nose. I don't like a candied lavender, but I like it when it has that medicinal calming effect. That's exactly what I get out of this. Next up is Cherry Punk Extrait. So if you have the original Cherry Punk, I will caution you that this is nearly identical. I do not think that you would need both, but 
If you don't have it and you're looking for a cherry leather fragrance, I would go with the x straight because I feel for me, now not everyone's gonna agree, that this did last longer on my skin and had a little bit more of a robust scent profile while smelling nearly the same. This is a sweet maraschino cherry that comes off a little bit spicy from some Sichuan pepper, but then when it dries down, it has a heavy dose of leather. This is a rock and roll fragrance. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's animalic and dirty. I do feel like this one has better performance, but if you already have one, you do not need both. I wanna break really quickly to tell you guys a funny story. So when I went to Scent Explore, I came up on the display of Boho Boco. They had been very generous to send me quite a few fragrances in the past, and if I'm being honest, I didn't get along with quite a few of them. And I had been outspoken that I didn't care for the ones that I had tried. And I felt like a deer in the headlights walking past their thing because the two owners who are brothers were standing there and just got shit eating grins on their faces. I felt the blood running to my face like, oh my God, I talked and now they're looking at me right in the face and they're like, hi, Olivia. And I was like, oh God, I'm sorry. It's how it goes. You know, I have to give you the true information. <laughs> I was impressed that they had a look of confidence of like, oh no, 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 go ahead and look around and you're gonna find something you like, trust me. And the minute I picked up one fragrance to smell it, I must have had the expression written all over my face because it went something like this. I locked eyes with one of the owners and he just looked at me and shook his head and said, I'll get you a bottle. So they were very generous to hook me up with some fragrances because I finally found the boho bocos that work for me. The other ones did not work for me and these three, oh my God. So the one that totally stole my heart from the beginning sniff, and I don't think I had tried it before, is Dark Vinyl Musk. Even my friend, who is not a fragrance person, you know those people that are adamant that they do not like perfumes? She's very much a nature girl. She complimented me on this fragrance because it does have a very natural, earthy quality to this. So this is an amber dominant musk fragrance that comes off sticky, and animalic with quite a bit of leather. It smells one with nature, very woody, and just warming and cozy, but in a way that isn't overly sweet. I felt hot wearing this fragrance. This one is so good, but you have to love a dark resinous fragrance. This would be too much for a lot of people, I think. <laughs> it is so good. It is, if you're trying to be sexy and mysterious and like a vampire, this one, this one right here. Next is their flagship fragrance, Vanilla Black Pepper. Now this is not going to be your vanilla cupcake sort of fragrance, but rather this is very spicy, very woody, and a little bit powdery. There is a little bit of sweetness coming from some resins that smells again like tree sap, but there is that freshly coarse ground black pepper that gives it some spiciness. There is a dry cedar wood along with a clean musk. So overall, I would categorize this first as a spicy woody fragrance with some sweet resinous vanilla in the background. But overall, this is going to be for those of you who like something that is more natural smelling. Imagine a vanilla pod with a ton of dry wood and black pepper. That's what you're gonna get out of this. Next is sea salt caramel. Much like the last one, this is not going to be a candied sort of caramel, but rather this is a fresh salty marine water with a little bit of sweetness. There is a note of seagrass that's going to come off very oceanic and there's a little bit of an aromatic touch coming from some bay leaf as well as a sheer floral coming from some jasmine. This will be good for those of you who like something that is very summertime, very uplifting and watery and fresh and aquatic, but you do want a little bit of sweetness. You're getting that caramel and brown sugar in the background, so this is gonna be amazing for summertime. Next is a very exciting release that I accidentally leaked on my channel before its release date. So this is from the brand Electimus, and this is their Mercurial Cashmere, but they came out with hair mist, and I thought they were out already, so I posted it on my story, and people were saying, what? 
packaging is that? I haven't seen that before. And I was like, oh, it's the hair mist. A couple days later, they release it on their Instagram, and I was like, oh, my God, guys, I am so sorry. I was talking about this a couple days ago. Luckily, I didn't write it in the story itself. They were totally understanding. I just felt so stupid. So Electimus is a very expensive house and these are coming in at a little bit lesser of a price than their regular fragrances. And they have properties that actually help to condition your hair, such as panthenol. And as a hairdresser and a fragrance lover, this excites me so much. So Mercurio Cashmere, is a beautiful vanilla fragrance, but once again, this is not a super sweet, super candied vanilla, but rather a very powdery, ambery vanilla. That powderiness is coming from some iris, along with a creamy floral tuberose, and this also has some caramel to it. It smells very warm and cozy because of some tonka bean. This fragrance is so beautiful. I layered this with Exalté by Fumi Monet. I put this in my hair and I wore Exalté on my body and it smelled so divine. That combination should have been illegal. Now for my true sweet vanilla lovers, this one is for you. This is a vanilla bomb. This is called Van Ecstasyx. And this is made with seven different types of vanilla. But this also has a burnt sugar caramelized effect along with a tonka bean and a little bit of woodiness with some white florals. But overall, this is as vanilla as you can get your hands on and it is amazing. When I was in New York, I went to a release party for the new fragrance Lover by The Maker and I was wearing this with Lover, which was kind of an odd combination, but it worked. And when I hugged Jeremy Fragrance at the event, he smelled me and he goes, oh, you're wearing the vanilla fragrance from Lorenzo Pazalia, right? His nose is phenomenal because that whole place smelled like Lover, which is a woody fig jasmine fragrance. And I guess this vanilla cut right through all of it because the minute I saw him, he was like, I know exactly which one you're wearing. So if you're a vanilla fan, this is an incredible vanilla. I just realized how many fragrances I'm talking about today have caramel in it. So this next one is called Mula Mula Double Caramel. Now this one is incredibly similar to La Capitale by Zerzhov, which has become wildly popular online. But that one takes a bit of a different turn and gets very dark in the base. But this one smells like the opening of La Capitale throughout the entire wear. So you get a lot of caramel that is gooey and sweet and delicious, along with a candied strawberry. This one also has oud, but in comparison to La Capitale, this is much less woody and stays deeply gourmand throughout the entirety of the wear. So if you tried La Capitale and the leather and the woodiness was a little bit too much on the dry down, but you loved that opening, this one right here. Now, if you have both, it might be a little redundant, but I adored this fragrance. The minute I tried it, I knew I needed my hands on it. Next is my very very first fragrance from Fragrance Du Bois, and this is called Voyage à Paris. This is a honey dominant fragrance, and this is as if you were smelling the natural honeycomb. It is sweet and syrupy, but there is almost something waxy and slightly animalic when you smell natural honey on the comb. There is a lot of depth and a lot of warmth coming from some rum, as well as a strong presence of white florals in the form of orange blossom, but it doesn't feel too indolent. There is a rich oud along with a vanilla that gives it a creamed honey sort of feel. So this is white floral dominant, but honey sweet with a lot of woodiness. This smells so regal and so expensive. And I'm so happy to have this as my very first introduction to the house because it is incredible. Next is Whoa. Illusion from Reinvented. This is a magical fragrance. This smells like Instant Crush by Mancera or Baccarat Rouge had a baby with oud for greatness. So take that beautiful saffron and sponge sugar that you're getting from Instant Crush or Baccarat Rouge, but then take that warm and spicy rich oud that you're getting from oud for greatness 
put them together and you are getting a beautiful alchemy. This is perfectly unisex. I think anyone would smell super opulent in wearing this. It smells regal and expensive, but it has a beautiful balance between some sweet elements and some spicy deep woody elements. It is a fragrance of my dreams. We're going to wrap up today with my last fragrance, Naki by Père Noir. I just want you to imagine this scenario. It is a cool day in springtime and you climbed up a fig tree and you are sitting next to the beach and you are eating a fuzzy peach. That's what this smells like. You are getting the delicate fuzzy skin and the juiciness from the peach, but you are getting the entirety of the fig tree. You're getting the leaves, you're getting the fruit, and you're also getting the woodiness from the bark itself. And then in comes a cold, refreshing, salty sea breeze that's in the air. So it's not too marine. It's definitely sweet and green. And despite being a fresh, green, fruity fragrance, the performance of these are crazy. This lasts 14 hours on the skin for me. And believe it or not, friends, I actually have more fragrances that I could talk about today, but I need to call it here. Otherwise, today's video is going to be ridiculously long, and I like to keep them around 20 minutes, so that way I'm not cutting into your guys' day. I don't want it to be a whole long homework project to watch my videos, so we try to keep it a little bit more bite-sized. Let me know if you guys are cool with the 20 minute mark, or if you want longer, or if you want shorter, let me know. I, I find that to be the sweet spot. And don't get me wrong, I like hauls and all, but I like themed videos much better, so I'm going to save the other ones I have for some time in the future. And you know what? I'm feeling fresh out of ideas, so I ask of you, if there's anything in particular that you would like for next week's video, let me know. Let me know if there's any fragrances from today's video that you want me to talk more in depth about that caught your attention. So I hope you guys join me for next week's video. I'll be here 10 a.m. PST as always, and until then, take care of yourselves, my friends.